The importance of euthanasia, death with dignity. 52.7 million. According to the World Health Organization, that's how many people were recorded of dying of incurable diseases in just one year out of three categories. Cancer, cardiovascular diseases, and infectious diseases. All of which one can imagine would be a living hell and definitively a death sentence. That's not even including the thousands that undoubtedly died of rarer and more painful conditions. However, the one thing that they all share in common is that the pain and death a person had to go through knowing that there was no escape and the only way to get free is to wait until your body physically cannot take it anymore and fails from the inside out. However, thanks to modern technology, there are ways to prevent this continuous pain. Euthanasia is death with dignity in the most humane way and allows people to have control over their own life. It is a solution that should be legal and more recognized. Many medical professionals understand the effects pain can have on one's physical and mental psyche, along with the importance of keeping that pain away, some of which cannot be kept at bay by medication, even with the modern advancements that are accessible in the present day. Physicians take oaths and study medicine in the hopes that they will keep people from ever falling down that spiral of pain. However, at some point, there has to be a point of no return, a point when it turns from less of a lengthy treatment to more of an unbearable waiting game. A surprising amount of people face this waiting game daily with no other options than to let death run its course naturally. Understandably, mental health and the will to live would be at an all-time low and the presence of death would be a daily occurrence. A large argument in the medical field is the Hippocratic Oath, an oath all physicians take to practice medicine to do no harm. Harm meaning cause no pain, even if the solution is erasing the equation altogether. So isn't watching someone die slowly and doing nothing because your own morals prevent you more harmful than using your power to allow someone an end with dignity and mercy? When it comes to the Hippocratic Oath, many modern renditions have been created to better perform in present-day situations. One such rendition being, if it has given me to save a life, all things, but it may also be within my power to take a life. This awesome responsibility must be faced with great humbleness and awareness of my own frailty. This suggests that sometimes assisting with a means to take a life can be just as benevolent and necessary as saving one, as long as it is done with a conscience. Sometimes when there is no other solution, the only way to help someone is to support them in their passing. To get this type of permanent help, the steps one must have to qualify is excruciating and brings up the point that there are so many unfortunate enough to be in a situation where euthanasia is even an option should get the right to make their own decision of the way that they die. It is the one right everyone deserves to have to not have taken away because if it is, people officially would have no power over their own lives. It is a sad, sad thing to watch someone struggle with that realization that they cannot control whether they live through pain or not. Examples of this happening are everywhere, some being more extreme and clear than others. One such being the case of Diane Pretty. Last month, Diane Pretty was refused the legal right to choose the circumstances of her own death. She suffers from a motor neuron disease and is experiencing the disintegration of her own body. She faces a death that she believes will entail indignity and suffering and physically cannot kill herself. The court has denied her request that her husband be allowed to help her. If someone feels dying through euthanasia is dying with dignity, then others have no right to not give them that last mercy because their own morals make them uncomfy with the idea. If they feel they would rather die a quick, painless death when they are ready, rather than a slow, unpredictable, torturous, and burdensome one, then they should have their last wish respected and carried out as they see fit. When the unavoidable outcome of death is the same, the next best thing to do is to make one's passing as smooth and painless as possible. If it just so happens to be making that outcome come earlier rather than later, then so be it. Everything should be about the patient's comfort and their belief system, not the doctor's. It is not up to the physicians to convince them to keep living. It is up to them to make living no longer a hell when the end result will be death anyway it's fun. Many, many people may look at euthanasia as nothing more than another way mankind has found to murder their own unnaturally. However, in the specific circumstance of medicine, euthanasia walks a fine line between saving a life and taking one. It's doing both, but which is crueler? When it takes a life, it is a last resort to keep a human being from dying in an animalistic way. And when it saves a life, it is only doing such for the sake of dignity and respect. Euthanasia as a whole has many subcategories. These consist of active, passive, and involuntary. Now, involuntary euthanasia is defined as when euthanasia is performed on a person who would be able to provide informed consent, but does not either because they do not want to die or because they were not asked. There is a misconception in the argument for the legalization of euthanasia that involuntary euthanasia will have more of a protected landslide legally. However, there is no other word for involuntary euthanasia than manslaughter and will still be charged as such. In the medical field, there are already many legal procedures that state physicians can aid in a patient's death if they so choose, such as a physician-assisted suicide, which is exactly what it sounds like, and passive euthanasia. 
This is when a doctor can pull life-sustaining machines that may cause a patient to pass without them. The difference between those treatments and active euthanasia is more for the patients with is active euthanasia is more for patients with terminal and gruesome illnesses that can cause them to be currently satisfactory but will slowly break down their bodies in excruciating pain and death being a certain reality, with death being a certain reality. This is where a doctor can step in and administer an effective dose of medicine that will end the patient's suffering. Medical active euthanasia provides a solution that is safe and painless and should be acknowledged as such. Medical euthanasia should be looked at as a tool to help those that have no other option, as death with dignity, as death with dignity, as an instrument of freedom that can choose painless fate and a realistic solution to end the suffering of those who wish to suffer no longer.